Are you looking for videos about HVAC? Are you tired of scrolling through videos that you never really seem to get what you're looking for? Maybe you're a technician looking for some information, looking to join the trade, or maybe you're a homeowner that needs a little bit of advice. Either way, Andy's Corner HVAC is your one-stop place for all of that. So I wanna say thank you for watching the videos. I wanna say thank you to all the current and future subscribers out there. I wanna remind everybody to be looking for the books from Andy's Corner HVAC. Now enjoy your video. All right, guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about heat exchangers. The heat exchanger in a modern day gas furnace is a vital piece of the equipment. It has to be safe, it has to function as it should, and so that just makes sense that we would need to have them checked out once in a while. So, you know, your normal furnace inspections typically include a heat exchanger inspection, or at least it should, because we've talked before in some of the other videos that yes, I do recommend maintenance yearly on each piece of equipment. That means twice a year altogether, once for your air conditioner and once for your furnace. That is just the standard. Everybody, every manufacturer out there recommends it. Every manufacturer out there says it and does it. People want to get on this crack that is some kind of scam doing maintenance on a furnace or that it is a scam that checking heat exchangers is just not really a thing and everybody's just trying to sell you a new furnace. That couldn't be further from the truth in most cases. Now, are there are some scammers out there? Absolutely. If this is the first time you're hearing of it, I hate to be the one to break you the bad news, but there are bad people in this world. There are bad people that do bad things in all kinds of fashions. And, you know, there are some bad heating and air guys out there. There are some people out there trying to turn a quick buck and all that kind of stuff. Now, I watched a video out there not too long ago. It was actually a very good video. It had a lot of good content in there, but it also had a lot of bad content in there. For one, they said that probably around 90% of contractors out there were scamming people when they said the heat exchanger was failed. I don't agree with this. I can't say that I've ever scammed anybody in 24 years over a heat exchanger. I've been a service tech along quite a while and I have never screwed somebody over about a heat exchanger. For one, one of the biggest things with a heat exchanger these days, most furnaces at minimum have a 20 year heat exchanger warranty. A good majority of them are lifetime and there are some out there of the better brands that have a lifetime unit replacement. So the idea of having to replace your furnace because the heat exchanger failed is far from the truth. That's not a real thing these days. Usually all the homeowner is re responsible for, assuming that it's out, out of all other warranties, is the labor fee, which usually isn't that high. Where I work, they do a flat rate for it. Uh, it covers shipping, installation, labor, all that kind of stuff. But all the heat exchanger and the parts that come with the heat exchanger are all covered under warranty, so you don't owe a dime. So this idea that heat, people, contractors out there are trying to scam individuals over heat exchanger replacements is couldn't be further from the truth. Now, years ago, though, we didn't have these great warranties that we do now. So, yes, when the day came that you a service tech came out or somebody came out and looked at your furnace and found a failed heat exchanger and said, well, you got a crack in it, and you asked what your options were, a lot of times they said, well, we can see if we can find a heat exchanger or it's time to replace the furnace. Back in the day, when we didn't have warranties for it, it would cost just about as much to put a heat exchanger in as it would to replace the furnace. Now, that like I said, that's back in the day. That's not today times. So don't take me wrong. Furnaces these days are very expensive. It's not your contractor's fault, so don't go blaming them. I know everybody always does, but it is the it is the manufacturer's fault. Inflation, the way that this world is today, everything's expensive. Vehicles are more expensive. I want to buy a new truck. The new truck that I want is eighty thousand freaking dollars. No, I'm probably not going to buy it because uh, I refuse to spend $80,000 on it. But that same truck you used to be able to buy for $50,000. That's not a thing anymore. You know, it's a matter of everything has gotten more expensive. Our industry is no different. Uh, labor rates haven't actually gone up much. It's the parts, pieces, and equipment that has increased. So either way, the idea of replacing a furnace for a failed heat exchanger anymore just doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if that furnace is 15, 20 years old or older, I would probably recommend it. I did another video out there not too long ago about how long should a furnace last. Yes, if you have a 20, 25 year old heat exchanger, or I'm sorry, a 20, 25 year old furnace and the heat exchanger fails on it, personally, I would not invest the money to replace the heat exchanger. It just doesn't make much sense to me. At that point, you still have a 20, 25 year old furnace that has a new heat exchanger in it. Everybody always says, I've got a brand new furnace because they put a heat exchanger in it. No, you don't. You have a brand new heat exchanger in a 25 year old furnace that has a hundred other 25 year old parts. So, you know, once we get to a point, yes, it is time to replace. 
But the idea of that heat exchanger being used as a scam, I think is false. So first, what we wanna look at is what is the heat exchanger and what does it do? Now, the heat exchanger itself is to put it as simply as possible, the heat exchanger is where the fire is burning in your furnace. The burners usually direct, uh, aim directly into the heat exchanger, the fire burns in there, and the heat from that fire or from that flame in each tube, most of them do have multiple chambers these days, that heat rolls up through there and passes out the flue pipe. It's usually being drawn out from the inducer, which is on the outside of the furnace, and pushes the flue gases out of the house. The heat that is generated from the flame inside that heat exchanger, the blower is blowing across the outside of that heat exchanger, picks up the BTUs that are being generated, and distributes them into your house via your ductwork. So that's the simplest way there. Now what happens when a heat exchanger fails is like I said there is flue gases and heat and fire inside that chamber, inside that heat exchanger. Now when there is a failure in the heat exchanger, which everybody always says cracks, cracks are still there Absolutely, but a lot of modern furnaces, because we do have tubular heat exchangers in most brands these days, except for Carrier, and Carrier's a freaking joke anyways. Don't even get me started on Carrier. I apologize, Carrier. If you'd like to advertise on my channel, I'd be more than happy to talk differently about you. No, that's a joke. Um, but yeah, you couldn't give me a Carrier either way. But my point is that if the heat exchanger does fail, you know, everybody always talks about cracks. Cracks do happen in the serpentine heat exchangers, clamshell heat exchangers, there are a lot of cracks in there. Tubular heat exchangers like we use nowadays, yes, they can get cracks in them, absolutely. Nine times out of 10 when they fail, they usually have uh, pinholes in them or they blow the back of the heat exchanger out altogether, the back of the tube out, a lot of times that is pretty common as well. Especially if somebody has a furnace that's been overheated, uh, you know, they're, it's overfired, they're not changing filters, ductwork's too restrictive, whatever, and oversizing of furnaces actually will do it too because then you have a lot of short cycling um, and it, it does horrible things to that steel that's in there on that heat exchanger. So there's a lot of different reasons for it, but that is another point to remember to change your furnace filter. After you get done with this video, if you can't remember the last time you changed your furnace filter, why don't you run inside and do that real quick? So, after the video. But my point is, whenever that heat exchanger fails, if it's a breach of some source, because that's what I call it, because they're not just cracks anymore, they can be cracks, pinholes, gaping holes in there, all kinds of stuff. So I call them a breach. Anytime there is a opening of some sorts in that heat exchanger, you have the fire going through, and then you have the blower distributing air to your house on the other side. If that's open, flue gases have the potential to enter the, the airstream and be put back into your house. So at this point, it would be a good time to remind you to make sure that your carbon monoxide monitors are up working and have good batteries in them and all that kind of stuff. If you do not have a carbon monoxide monitor in your house, please go find one. There's all kinds of HVAC contractors out there that offer them. Worst case scenario, you can hit up Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, all those guys, they sell them too. Most of the ones that they sell are detectors. I do believe personally in monitors, there is a difference. I'll do another video on the explanation of why, but either way, you need to have them. Some states actually require my state law. I happen to be in one of those states that requires a minimum of one carbon monoxide detector and or monitor to be in every house or actually on every floor of every multi-level house. Now, I personally believe that you need to have one on every floor and close to the bedrooms. I have children, so I'm going to make sure there is one close to my children's bedroom to make sure that they wake up. They can wake me up in case I don't wake up. Something along those lines. I don't want anybody to die because heat exchangers, that's the moral of the story, can potentially be dangerous. Now, I'm not using this as a scare tactic or I don't believe in fear mongering of any sorts, but heat exchangers can potentially be dangerous if they do fail in the right way. So that's why I want to make sure that we do take this seriously. I'm not just trying to say out there that, you know, it is a heat, it, it, it failed heat exchanger is just one of those things. But one of the biggest things that caught me in that other video that I watched is he said that uh, technicians will dis shut the gas off or disable that furnace in your home, leaving you without heat. And he said, now these are his words, quote, not mine, that as soon as they leave, just turn the gas back on and start the furnace back up because chances are it's just a scam and doesn't matter. That is absolute crap. I will not agree with that one whatsoever. That is putting the safety of a lot of people out there at risk. So, you know, that is, carbon monoxide is definitely a life safety issue. So we need to take it seriously. Now, he did say you could get second opinions. I am a believer of second opinions. Or if you have a contractor that you already trust and that you already know and you know that they're not trying to hurt you, then 
usually it's pretty safe to go with them. Um, but it just depends however you feel. I know we get into a lot of the cities. I forget sometimes doing these videos that I am in rural America and it's a different life here than what it is in some of the cities. We get into Chicago, New York, Atlanta, LA, some of these places, you know, there are a lot of contractors out there. There are a lot of homeowners out there and yeah, situations are a lot different. In my area, a lot of times people find contractors that they trust, they know, and that they like and have came recommended and they stay with them for a long time. I know that's not the way that it is everywhere. So if you are in one of those areas where you've got somebody that seems a little shady, I'd probably get a second opinion. Now, if you have a contractor that you trust, obviously you can you typically trust what they say. Um, so. But the point is that that heat exchanger itself is a very important piece of equipment. Now, there are certain ways to test it that need to be done. Uh, in the video that I watched, he said there are people pulling up pictures off of Google of failed heat exchangers, and yes, they're out there all over the place. You'll notice that I am putting a couple of those up right now. Those videos are all over the place. You can find them everywhere. And so if somebody does check your uh, heat exchanger, because visual inspection is, in my opinion, one of the best, I can trust my eyes, I, 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 I can see it, I can believe it. You know, I, there are a lot of different tests, but that's one of them. If you see these pictures, ask if they're live pictures. If I show someone a failed heat exchanger, I always show them a live view from a camera. Because we do have scopes with cameras on the end. They have modern ones nowadays that connect to your phone and the homeowner can hold the phone as you scope through there, whatever it may be. Make sure you see a live video. I personally don't like still frame shots because there is potential of somebody doing something they're not supposed to there. So have if you are a homeowner out there and somebody says you have a cracked or failed heat exchanger, have them show you. And at that point, they can go through the same process that they found it when you weren't there and they can show it to you in live firsthand vision. <clears throat> Cut that out. So that would definitely be one of the big things there is to make sure that you see it for yourself. The other thing is, there's a couple other tests. Um, a draft test is one of them, or a pressure test, uh, to make sure when the blower kicks on, it is not pulling a vacuum through a breach in that heat exchanger of some sorts. That's one way. And then the video that I watched, he said that a combustion analyzer uh, is another way to test a heat exchanger. That is 100% false. And actually, I read a bunch of his comments that he had on this video, and there was a lot of texts out there that popped up and said the same thing I do, that a combustion analyzer is not a heat exchanger your testing tool by any means. Now, I do say that a combustion analyzer should be used on every single gas furnace out there. That is the only way that you know if it's burning safe or not. You know, the days of, you know, 50 years ago of some old guy with a flashlight looking in there say, yep, those flames are blue, it's burning good. That ain't real. Then <laughs> nobody can look at a flame and tell you if it's producing carbon monoxide or not, or what the level of carbon monoxide is. Combustion analyzer will test the amount of carbon monoxide, the amount of oxygen that's left after the burn, uh, CO2. Flu temperatures are, are critical to knowing if the furnace is running like it's supposed to. There's a bunch of stuff there, um, but a combustion analyzer should be used on every furnace. Now, if one does have a failed heat exchanger, there is potential that it could burn poorly, depending on how large the breach is. So it can be a tool used to aid in finding it but it is not the tool to find it by any means so you know those are some of the ways that they need to be testing it like I said if you're a homeowner out there and you're watching this other guy's video and you see that oh everybody's scamming you about heat exchangers have them show you in real time if they show you in real time what the failure is where the failures at and all that kind of stuff you're gonna know it I mean the, the proof is in the pudding at that point you know you've seen it it is potentially dangerous because he even says in his videos that yes failed heat exchangers are dangerous and like he said yes failed heat exchangers do happen now I don't agree with the idea that that comes to just buying a new furnace I already went over that but I want to stress that point that if you have a 10 year old furnace and the heat exchangers failed nine times out of ten you're probably going to have a warranty on that heat exchanger sometimes even if you're not the original owner now that's dependent on brand that uh, furnace that's in there and everything else i'm not going to tell you exactly what the warranties are because each brand is going to be a little bit different but the idea is there is potentially warranty out there so at that point all you're responsible for is labor uh, labor and shipping uh, any materials that are used so the heat exchanger itself which is the expensive part uh, will be all under warranty so if you do have somebody coming in and let's say you have a five-year-old furnace and somebody comes in and says you have a failed heat exchanger you need to buy a new furnace tell them to fly a kite 
you know, I, I'm not trying to knock contractors out there by any means. Uh, like I said, I've been a service tech for a lot of days, uh, a lot of years. And sometimes there are people out there that do shady things. But if you have a five-year-old furnace and they tell you that you need to buy a new one because the heat exchanger failed, get a second opinion. Don't feel pressured. Don't feel like you have to do anything. Like I said before, I do not believe in fear mongering whatsoever, uh, especially when it comes to our line of work. Um, you know, the average person a lot of times doesn't know much about a furnace. They shouldn't have to. The idea is for a trusted contractor to be able to look after that system for them and make sure that it is safe and everyone is staying comfortable. Now, I do believe that homeowners should know some information. Uh, that's one reason I do these videos is because I think everybody should have a little bit of information. That way you have a direction to go with. But the idea is that you know you're supposed to have a trusted contractor be looking after this so my biggest moral to the story is is we need to have heat exchangers checked out heat exchangers can potentially be dangerous but it's not necessarily the end of the world either so if a technician does come in and shut your furnace down for some reason if you don't trust that opinion get a second one don't just turn it back on yourself that was a horrible horrible thing that i heard in that other video and it scares the hell out of me that people are going to turn their furnace on and be hurt in some fashion um, nobody wants to be hurt and nobody wants to see someone else be hurt so the idea is just be safe just be realistic and common sense tells you if somebody tells you to shut it off there could be a reason if you don't trust what that person said ask someone else to see what they say and that way we can confirm what the situation actually is so either way heat exchangers are, are, are important they need to be checked out all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions, as always, hit me up in the comments. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I know this one got a little long-winded. I am fairly passionate about the whole safety factor of this. So, you know, I want as many people out there to know as possible that we need to stay safe. And your trusted, reliable contractors are trying to do that for you. It's not necessarily a scam. Now, again, there are scammers out there, but most contractors are just out there to help. And that's what I'm here to do. So again, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and share the video with a friend just because it's the right thing to do.